Hey, happy Monday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Good morning to all of you. Now, I'm going to show you the latest information on Invest 91L. It is exactly at 29 miles per hour now, moving west at 14 miles per hour, and it is expected to strengthen as it goes through the Caribbean. Plus, as this cold air starts moving in around the 8th or the 9th, I'm showing we have a potential major snowstorm coming our way, as well as these cold temperatures going to continue to start dropping as we go through October into November. And you can see where the ensembles are predicting for this to go. Majority of them is taking it to the west, still showing we have the high pressure blocking for the Gulf, and it is going to the southwest. H Wharf is just taking it to the north and intensifying, and there's a lot of shear over there, so that would really go against what could happen. It is getting some shear, but sometimes this shear could help clear the tops out the top of these waves and help it intensify. The invest is the wave right behind it as it pulls to the west and we do have an upper level low over here putting some shear and you can see the shear hitting on these storms. If you look at the mid levels, you can see there's not a lot of dry air in the path of this. But you can see also that the thunderstorms is getting sheared off northern in the MDR. But as far as invest 91L, it is spinning just fine. It is getting a little bit of shear from the south to the north, not a lot. But sometimes this shear can help clear the tops from the top of this wave if anything's disrupting it and it can intensify. Now I'd like to let you know that GFS and Ural is not showing this intensification, but it is predicted to intensify. So as we take a look at it this morning, it is 30% in 48 hours, 40% in the next five days. And National Hurricane Center is saying that this wave has changed a little in organization during the past several hours and further development of this wave is possible and a tropical depression could form the next few days while it moves generally west at 15 to 20 miles per hour, reaching the Windward Islands and the Eastern Caribbean Sea by midweek. Now to try and figure out all the information and data what can be expected out of this wave, National Hurricane Center has it in 48 hours moving towards the Eastern Caribbean and in 72 hours going to be passing over the Caribbean. You notice how I don't have a surface low yet according to National Hurricane Center although the information shows intensification is possible. Now, just to be well-rounded, I'm going to show you all the data I can find for you. According to a tropical depression by the GFS, it shows it will strengthen up as it goes towards the islands in Eastern Caribbean, but then it'll start weakening down. Euro shows that it will be weak and it'll start strengthening as it goes Nicaragua, Honduras, towards Central America. But when you go by the Canadian, the Canadian is showing what the intensity guidance is showing us, that it has a good strength strong potential to become at least a strong tropical depression as it approaches the island still going on the same path somewhere around Nicaragua, Honduras, a little bit northern, maybe towards Belize. Now, another piece of information we need to look at is the automatic tropical cyclone forecast. And it is showing that definitely going to be a tropical storm within the next 48 hours. And as it goes to 72 hours, maybe a strong tropical storm, maybe a low-end Cat 1 hurricane. Now, just like I showed yesterday, Euro and GFS is not showing this. But when you look at the intensity guidance for Invest 91L, it is predicted to intensify to a tropical storm, if not in 12 hours, more than likely 24 to 48 hours, a good chance for this to become a tropical storm. And intensify 72 hours as it passes by the islands, goes to the Eastern Caribbean, and as you go towards five days, a strong tropical storm. H Wharf takes it to a strong hurricane, but it takes it on a northern track, which is against what everything else is showing. But still, within five days, you could have a strong tropical storm or more. So as we look with the Canadian, since the Canadian shows the intensity and it is expected to strengthen and other models don't show it strengthening. Literally in three days, it's going to be passing over the Eastern Caribbean islands, and it is going to strengthen to at least a tropical depression. And then once you go towards the five-day mark, it is moving towards Jamaica, and this is where it's going to take that west, southwest push. And it has it all the way down to a 975 potential hurricane going through the Caribbean, still going towards Nicaragua, Honduras, and strengthening also back down to a 967 a very strong hurricane coming in the Caribbean as it goes towards Belize and goes out from Central America into the Eastern Pacific. 
bringing heavy rainfall and some potentially strong winds. So according to the Canadian, by Wednesday afternoon, you could be getting a lot of potential heavy rainfall and some strong wind gusts passing over the islands. After it passes by the islands in the Eastern Caribbean, it does go close towards Puerto Rico where it could get some rain involved, some accumulation from this system if this plays out according to the Canadian. And then it goes towards Jamaica and we are talking literally right after five or six days. But you can see how the rain band gets right across Jamaica and it could add up to some heavy rainfall for Jamaica if the Canadian shows true. Now remember, Euro and GFS don't show their strength, but Euro and GFS don't show it going to at least a tropical depression, tropical storm neither, and that intensity is expected out of this system, as it brings a lot of heavy rainfall towards Nicaragua, Honduras, Belize, the Yucatan, all of Central America is going to get in on this rainfall, and the wind gusts as well. So as it goes over the Eastern Caribbean islands, that right there you can see on the bottom is 40 to 50 miles per hour wind gusts, for the southern islands and this is all the way by the fifth in the afternoon when this passes over then it strengthens up according to the canadian don't bring no winds towards puerto rico but maybe some 40 miles per hour wind gusts towards jamaica hopefully it don't get any closer if this does show true the trend has always been a west to a southwest but as it goes towards nicaragua and honduras it really picks up its strength and it gets all the way out here in the caribbean down to 106 miles per hour wind gusts and it looks like 70, 80, even 90 is possible on landfall. Now, if this was to form up like the Canadian is seeing, like the intensity guidance is expected out of this tropical wave, the next name on the list is Julia. So Julia would be the name if it does form up. And as we look with the update for the long range, according to the Euro, I'm still showing we have two strong storms still coming the end of October, the beginning of November. And the 8 o'clock update did just come out. You see it is a little more of a curve, and it is more southern. It's still 30% in 48 hours, 40% in the next five days. And it does say some further development is still possible, and it has become slightly better organized since yesterday. So we do need to keep our heads up on this wave, because sometimes that shear could help clear off the, the tops of these waves, and it can intensify. They're expecting int intensification GFS and Euro is not showing it, but the Canadian is seeing it and National Hurricane Center is expecting it. So let's just stay up to date on this, make sure everybody knows what the impacts are. So far, none for the U.S., but our Caribbean friends next door, they're going to need to stay notified on this just in case this does strengthen up and get moving. So when you check what's going on with the potential major snowfall, according to the Euro, as you go all the way to October 10th, right when we're starting to get this cold air coming in, the one I showed you yesterday, but it is showing some snowfall until then for Colorado. But when you look at the ensemble for the Euro, you can see it is expected within the next 10 days to have major snowfall for upper elevations for Wyoming, also for Colorado, just like it's showing within the next 72 hours is expected to happen. But as you go forward, you can see that we start getting some major snowfall moving in from the 11th through the 12th. We get some good snowfall coming. Now, this is at the end of the run, and the only reason I'm showing you this is because the ensembles is showing this is going to pick up and become even more. It's showing all the way from September 29th all the way to October 9th that we could get some snowfall coming. But as you go the next few days where it showed it come from Idaho, Wyoming, maybe even Montana getting that snowfall in the last few hours of the Euro run, it's showing it could be also for Oregon, maybe even some for California, some for Washington. But it's showing that some snowfall is coming in anytime from the 4th of October through the 14th when this cold air does start moving in. And if you go further, you can see that a big snowstorm is expected not only for Canada, also for the U.S., as we go from October 9th through the 19th, a big snowstorm is expected. And it does linger around all the way to the October 24th, all the way to October 29th. We have a lot of potential snowstorms coming from the northwest. And it's coming with a lot of heavy snow. So when you check and see what's going on with the temperatures, you can see the temperatures, they're in the 40s, you're in the 50s, some people are in the high 30s, depends where you're at. But you can see that this cold air starts really moving in once we go from the 10th through the 12th. And so far, it is bringing teens, 20s, even single digits for Canada while we get some low 20s to some high 20s coming in with this potential major 
snowstorm coming in the beginning of October, all the way to October 12th. And I'm showing the cold air is going to keep coming in all the way towards November. The warm air is pretty much going to leave in October. And you can see this when you look at your Arctic Oscillation. This is the EPS Ensemble Prediction System. It's forecast confidence for medium to long range for the Euro. This is a 46 day forecast. And you can see how we get our dip of cold air on the 6th. We get a little warm up. Then we get our cold air coming down from the 9th, 10th, and 11th. If you continue to look, you'll see that the cold air sticks around, gets even colder during the end of October, and starts going even colder towards the beginning of November. The warm temperatures never come back. We're starting to go towards colder and colder temperatures, guys. We could be looking at major snow coming early for this year. And we are dealing with cold temperatures now. So I have this link in the description for you as well as from National Weather Services. It's your next five to seven day temperature outlook for your morning lows and your daytime highs. So as we go through today, you can see the cooler temperatures. Everybody's waking up on the east side with a lot of cool temperatures. For tomorrow, it's going to stick around. For Wednesday, it's going to stick around. But once we go to Thursday, it's going to start coming through the upper Midwest. Friday, it's going to start bringing those 20s. And your highs for Friday will be in the 40s to 50s. So it will be very cold temperatures. As you go into Saturday, it's going to move through the Ohio Valley. And your highs for Saturday is going to be in the high 50s. So it will be a nice cool breeze. Very cold temperatures are starting to move in as we go towards this weekend. And as you go towards Sunday, it's going to move towards the East Coast with these high 30s and 40s for everyone else. Plus, remnants of Ian is still in the Northeast. They have nasty weather, very ugly skies. And this is actually sitting here for a few more days, just putting precipitation on the Northeast. It is gonna be bringing some rainfall, also some flash flooding. This is the next 48 hours with high resolution rapid refresh. And you can just see how long this storm is just gonna sit here and just spin for days on you guys while you're dealing with storms, heavy rainfall, and possible flooding. So remember, the time and date is up here on the top left. I got it moving a little quick. That way you can see everything that's going on in the complete time. Thank you so much for visiting my channel today. God bless all of you dealing with everything that you're dealing with. I want to give you a little inspiration to let you know everything will be okay. Smile. Have a great day today, the best you can. So I want to read to you today John 16, verses 20 through 33. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in travail, hath sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again. And your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. At that day ye shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you, because ye have loved me, and have believed that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father and am come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly and speakest no proverb. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things and needest not that any man should ask thee? By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. Jesus answered them, Do ye now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. 
I have overcome the world. Amen. God bless all of you. Have a very blessed Monday out there. Stay positive. Stay motivated. You will have a great day. Maybe you can help someone else smile. That's not having a great day. Remember, we do affect others. All glory does go to God. <laughs> Our Father in heaven, forever and ever. And he is coming back. Be of good cheer. For these days are numbered. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless everyone. I'll keep you updated on the tropics to see if it's just the Canadians by itself or if that's actually happened. Just keep your ears open. They are expecting some intensification.